Well, welcome back. The Senate passed the $1.7 trillion omnibus bill yesterday with the help of 18 Senate Republicans. House Republicans are now threatening to block all priorities from those GOP senators who voted for it. Joining me right now is CPAC chairman and the author of uh, The Desecrators, Matt Schlapp, is here. Matt, great to be, uh, great to have you this morning. Thank you so much for being here. What does this tell you? I mean, isn't this why the Republicans are in the minority in the yeah. Senate, as Kim Strassel wrote today in the Journal? Yeah, this is right, Maria. Um, you can't have the leadership or the elected leaders from the Republican Party be so at odds with the grassroots regular folks that vote for them uh, so often. And this omnibus is just it's it's treason to these voters to these activists who worked so hard to help Mitch McConnell get a majority in the Senate even though they came short and to help uh, if it's going to be Kevin McCarthy in the House to get a, a majority and you know for the Senate Republicans to give up their leverage Maria their whole leverage is that if they could have kicked the can down the road just until the Republicans took over the House, we could have cut back on some of the spending and we could have mandated some spending to close this border. I just had a good uh, friend who works with me the other day who died of a fentanyl overdose. This is an uh. epidemic, and what the Biden administration is doing is literally killing Americans. This bill does nothing to help the problems, does nothing to lower gas prices, will fuel inflation, and that border stays wide open. And, and Mitch McConnell had the nerve to say on Tuesday that this bill uh, gets us all of our priorities. What is he talking about? As part of this bill, there's $11 billion in funding for the FBI. Matt, are they not watching the conversation taking place? We now know, thanks to Elon Musk and the exposing of the corruption, that the FBI confirmed that it actually paid Twitter and other social media companies to go along with their requests. It's not revealing the other social media companies by name, well, obviously we could guess, but it's also maintaining that it did not provide any instruction about censoring the Hunter Biden laptop story. Just coincidence that two weeks before the election that they knew that the New York Post was about to come out with the Hunter laptop evidence of influence peddling, and they claimed that they did not bring it up to social media companies. What do you, what do you think they paid them for? Yeah, exactly, Maria. And how many of these 18 Republican senators were just fine with that? Remember, Trump came to Washington as a disruptor, and he disrupted everyone. Every single American at some point or another were offended by something that Donald Trump did. But his main focus was to change the way business was done in Washington. And these old-time senators don't like that. They like this business. Why did they vote for this omnibus? Because they're claiming, well, they got some increase defense uh, spending in the bill. But for those of us out there in the country uh, and for all the people I travel around and talk to, they sure they want defense funded, but they realize this level of government in our lives, this level of taxation is unsustainable. America's going to get to a breaking point. And it's a person without power, money or influence that's going to take all the pain. These senators, oh, they'll be fine. So I say to the, these same senators, what are you doing to hold the FBI accountable? Nothing. You give them a pay raise. What are you doing to give to make DOJ accountable? Nothing. You just voted for a bill that increases funding so we can keep looking at the four-hour protest riot on January 6th. We are not focusing on the priorities that the American people care about, no matter what their party affiliation is. And this bill is an indictment on the careers of these senators, including those who are leaving office. And for Elon Musk and for the true new disruptors in our economy, the Republican Party should find allegiance with them, or the Republican Party is going to be like the dinosaur. It's going away. You can't be a political party when you don't like the people who vote you into office. Yeah, it's all extraordinary. I reported on this program uh, months ago that so many people who stepped down at the Obama administration got big paying jobs at social media yes. companies. Uh, the New York Post did the legwork and they have reported specific names. Many ex-intelligence officers are deeply embedded in those companies. Twitter was home to at least eight former FBI agents, 15 other intelligence officers working for Meta. Your reaction to this, uh, you know, failing up 
James Baker failing up. He was the general right. counsel at the FBI as they pursued surveillance on ordinary American citizens because they had something to do with Donald Trump. And what does he do? Gets the general counsel deputy job at Twitter. No, this is this was shocking to me. James Baker is uh, just I, 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 despicable is the only word I can think of. He's at the FBI. He knows that the laptop is credible. He knows it's a lie to say it's Russian disinformation. They try to peddle this idea that all the intelligence agencies, the same one who said Trump colluded with Russia, somehow this was a, a Russian disinformation campaign. He then goes to Twitter, knowing that the laptop story was a credible story from the New York Post and from others, and then he continues to use his power at Twitter to tell the top execs and the board at Twitter that they need to uh, suspend anybody talking about this story. You know, yeah. that's called lying. That's what my that's yeah. what my pastor would call lying. But it's worse than that. This is peddling a fraud, and this is the true collusion that the American people are so disgusted at. That's why they don't trust people who are supposed to be experts, Maria, except people like you who are telling the truth. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, real quick, how about John Solomon's reporting that the House GOP has located emails, texts that shows Nancy Pelosi's office was directly involved in the January 6th failures in security? Well, we already know one thing, thanks to Tom Fitton at Judicial Watch and FOIA, that on the day of January 6th, Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, and the other leaders knew that the, the Capitol Hill police was at 50 percent strength due to people not coming to work over the coronavirus. So they knew going into January 6th that they were only at half strength. And anybody with any common sense knew that January 6th was going to have all kinds of trouble. And they did nothing about it. And I think that is the true story behind January 6th that they refuse to ask questions about. And all those ordinary Americans right now facing backlash and jail time. Matt, thanks very much. Merry Christmas to you and your beautiful family. Matt Schlapp joining us this morning. Matt, best regards.